I'm closing the microphone. Okay. Good luck. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome as you're coming in. Just letting everyone in, so it'll just be a couple minutes. Thanks everyone, welcome as you're joining us, just another minute or so as we're letting everyone in. Um, please make sure your cameras are off if they're not, they should be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome everyone, just another couple of minutes as we're letting everyone in. Great. Thanks everyone. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm so glad that you can join us this evening. My name is Sari. I'm the Public Programs Director of MOFAD, the Museum of Food and Drink. Uh, it's just so exciting to have everyone joining us this evening. I know there's people coming from all over. Um, and of course, our host, this evening, Amadeo is joining us all the way from Naples, of course. Um, so it's midnight where he is. So we're very appreciative uh, that he's he's staying up late to make this <laughs> program possible for us. Um, just a reminder, your camera should be off. Your microphones should be off throughout this program. We appreciate you helping with us, helping, helping that um, just so it doesn't get distracting for Amadeo's presentation. And um, also want to let you know that I am recording this program. I know there's people who asked uh, to send the recording tomorrow and I will absolutely do that in a follow-up email. Um, some of you joined us not too long ago for our first Culinary Backstreets program partnership. It was a taste of Barcelona. Um, and you might recognize Paola, her, her, little, her little square at the top of your screen. If you were with us for Barcelona, then you would recognize her lovely face. She is Amadeo's assistant this evening, um, helping on behalf of Culinary Backstreets. She's gonna be helping us play some videos. So again, thank you, Paola, for joining us again. And once again, for staying up so late. It is so nice to have you. Um, so, <laughs> um, so just quickly for those of you who aren't familiar with MOFAD, if this is the first time you're joining us, we're the Museum of Food and Drink. Um, we really think of food as culture and we've been doing virtual programs now since May. Um, so it's such a pleasure to be doing our second program partnership with Culinary Backstreets. They are in my very humble and yet correct opinion, um, the best food tour company in the world, absolutely. They do incredibly immersive, um, really interesting off the beaten path tours in cities all over the world and really give you an experience you just really wouldn't be able to get if you were you know, just a tourist trying to do it on your own. Um, I have been with them in several cities and that's how I got connected to them. And I loved the, the virtual option that we got with Paola for Barcelona. It really felt like we were taking a trip. So I'm so excited to be able to do this uh, program in Naples tonight. And of course, once the pandemic is over, you should immediately book your tours um, to do their in-person trips and tours once again, because it's such an incredible experience that has made every every trip that I've taken uh, just that much better when I've had the opportunity to experience a city uh, through their lens. So that being said, um, I'm going to shut up now and pass it over to our host this evening, Amadeo. He's first going to tell you a little bit about himself, and then he is going to take you on his virtual tour of Naples. And then at the end, we're going to have time for some questions, and we'll use the chat function for that. So I'll be back at about a quarter till the end of the hour to help facilitate that. Have fun, I say safe travels, but I don't need to say that since we're all at home. Just enjoy yourselves. See you soon. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Sari. I am Amedeo Colella. I'm speaking from Napoli. It's midnight here, so you can understand it's not easy for me. I'm a little bit tired. Moreover, I'm very emotionated. So uh, I, 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 ask, I ask you some comprehension. Moreover, because my English is not so rich. So my English is very poor. So uh, you have to... to <laughs> Uh, for, for, forgive me if uh, if I never have the right word. I am the, the Culinary Backstreet Naples uh, Bureau Chef, and uh, 
uh, I want to present you all, all the food, the panel of the food we selected to explain tonight to you the history of, uh, of uh, Neapolitan cuisine, of Neapolitan gastronomy. But uh, moreover, we want to, 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 to show the product that uh, product to people, uh, restaurant places that, uh, that uh, we have the mission to protect. Yes, because I uh, share the, the mission of, uh, that my company has, Culinary Back Streets. I am very proud to, to work with this company because we want to enhance, to protect uh, um, some special uh, kind of production, some, some special people, some special factory, very, very small multi-generational activities. For example, people that still continue to produce the same things from at least 200 years in the same place with the same tools, with the same techniques of production. And they have a great risk to be, uh, to be swept away from the globalization and also now from the, the COVID pandemic. So we, we want to, to, to give great value to these people and to this product. This is why we selected <clears throat> a panel, a group of product uh, with whom I want to try to explain the, the history of Neapolitan food. But, but we have a problem. Uh, um, Neapolitan cuisine, Neapolitan gastronomy is uh, 3,000 years old. So we will try in 45 minutes to explain and with only eight products to explain uh, 3,000 of, uh, of history. Because still today, we uh, in Naples, in the south of Italy, we still today, we eat some food that uh, has roots directly in, during the Greek domination, during the Latin, during the Roman domination. So imagine that we still today, for example, we have sweets uh, that we can consider the, the oldest, the, the oldest sweet of humanity. We, we name, we call them the struppoli. They come directly from strogolos. Strogolos in Greek, they are some, small um, balls uh, made by water and wet, and they, they were seasoned with honey 3,000 years ago. And we still eat them in this period after 3,000 years. So uh, this is not so easy. And I want to be, very, and now I start, I want to be also very, very proud to say that we, when we say Neapolitan gastronomy, we speak of Italian gastronomy in general, because if you go in an Italian restaurant in, in every, every country of the world, probably they offer you the typical Neapolitan dishes. They offer you pasta with carbonara, pasta with Neapolitan sauce, with ragu, or uh, uh, eggplant parmigiana, parmigiana di melanzane, or for dessert, torta caprese. So they offer you Neapolitan food. So I am very proud to, to say that Italian food abroad is mostly composed by Neapolitan food. Uh, the city was Greek, founded by Greek 3000 years ago, but then became Roman. And the Roman were, were crazy for the food. They, the Romans eat very, very, very well. Uh, but mostly there is a product that is directly the head of a of a, a, a Roman food, a Roman sauce. This sauce is named the garum. I want to share, I want to share with you a, a picture. Only 15 days ago, 15 days ago in Pompeii, they discovered a new thermopolium. This is a thermopolium. Thermopolium is like the, the fast food of the old Pompeii, of the old Rome. Uh, is the the, the takeaway, the place where Romans go and buy wine for, for to take home. And mostly they buy a special kind of sauce. And this sauce is garum. And like Pliny the Elder explained in his, in his writing, uh, this garum was made by the fish, fi, um, fish, but not, not, all, not all the fish, but mostly the head, the entrails of the fish, and then were added garlic and some more spices and the Romans were totally crazy for this uh, kind of sauce that for us could, could be terrible today. Uh, but garum, they used to put garum in all food and mostly even, even on dessert, imagine. So today, after 2000 years in, in our region, we still produce 
uh, uh, something very similar to Garum. And this is the first product I want to present you. This is the Colatura di Alici di Cetara, the pudding of, um, um, of this special fish, uh, the, the, the leakage of anchovies. Uh, today, we don't use exclusively the head and the entrails, so we, we uh, avoid to use that. We use the best fillets. So still today, in a very small town close to Napoli, 35 kilometers from Napoli, Cetara, a town in, uh, in Amalfi Coast, we still use. I asked to Paola if she can start the video. I want to show you how they produce, still today, the Colatura di Alici in Cetara. What is it? So very, very, very small boats because uh, all the anchovies are from the Tyrrhenian Sea, very close to this small town. Imagine in, in this small town, we have only today five factories, only five factories that they still produce with the same techniques of 2000 years ago. Um, anchovy sauce, uh, Colatura di Alici, is a, a niche product, is, is very, very, uh, a little bit expensive, so it's not used every day from Neapolitan people, and is protected like uh, slow food presidium, first of all, but uh, from uh, two months, from October 2020, it uh, has been uh, recognized like a DOP product from European Union. So this is very important for us because it's a very important rec recognition of a very old tradition, um, of very old Neapolitan product. Look at that, there is the small barrels, small barrels of chestnut, and they put one layer of uh, anchovies and one layer of salt, one layer of anchovies and one layer of salt. So uh, more or less exactly like they did to 2000 years ago, but today they use only the best fillets no, not anymore the, the head the, the, the entrails. This company is uh, the company Delfino Battista, one of the four company, four, or four factory, they still produce Colatura in, uh, in this small town of Cetara. Uh, it was born the company in uh, 1950. So uh, after producing, after putting the, the anchovies in the small barrels, they put the very heavy stones on the top to do, to, to prepare all the, the best product, okay? After Pasquale Battista was the founder of the company, now he has uh, four sons that still continue the activity of the father, and now we are already to the third generation. After five months, five, six, seven months, they produce a hole in the barrel on the, on the bottom. Imagine how long is the production and uh, they use two or three months that to obtain these drops that uh, and this this is the amber liquid okay after this this is uh, filtered in linen cloths and then uh, is used to produce uh, what we have in my hand today and this is the bottle i sent to most of you to moreover it is used today to season to season um, spaghetti, spaghetti. Yeah, this is the typical plate we produce today. And okay, we can use also on vegetables, we can use also on fishes, but mostly the typical plate yeah, in Amalfi Coast in Cetara, the typical plate is, um, uh, is uh, spaghetti with colatura di alici. So I hope that one day I can meet you over there to have a, uh, to, to stay together, to enjoy a plate of spaghetti with Colatura. Colatura was rediscovered 500 years ago from some, uh, by some monks of uh, San Pietro, a, a monastery in Amalfi Coast. And it was discovered because, you know, they keep anchovies under salt in very old barrels. In this, but so they were not, not, no more suitable to, 
to to keep the wine so because they were uh, there are some slot in, in the barrels so it happens that they enter in the cellar and they uh, one day they 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 saw that the, there were a leakage uh, through the slots so they take this uh, this uh, this liquid and they realized that this was a perfect season for pasta in Amalfikos, they were the best productors of pasta. So this is the first product I hope you will enjoy buying half a kilo of um, spaghetti, the best spaghetti, <laughs> better if uh, a spaghetti of Gragnano, Gragnano is a small town, I will present you this in another town later. But now we pass to the second product, but excuse me, because I'm very emotionated and I forgot to ask to Paula to, to launch the first video, the presentation of, of tonight. So Paula, if, if we are still on time, please, uh, it's only one minute for the beginning of, of the day. Okay. All the people you saw in in the in the presentation are the people that I hope you you will meet when you will come to Naples and I can meet you to 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 know these people that uh, we have a great mission. This is why I am very glad to work with Culinary Backstreets because we share the, the interest with this kind of product, person, factories, uh, food. Moreover, moreover, so. Uh, in Thermopolium, this, they sold something like Colatura di Alici. Thermopolium was the fast food of the, the old Rome, of Pompeii, of Herculaneum. But uh, when the Romans want to go to a restaurant, they didn't go to Thermopolium. They, they went to Caupona. Caupona was the restaurant of the old Rome. Caupona, they have a hot food, prepared food for the guests. But... Uh, sometime when they they always ready food for the occasional uh, customer uh, and they moreover have like a, a biscuit bread like a, a frasella frasella is a, it's a, it's a, like a biscuit they they can uh, soak in, in the water just uh, um, for the occasional customer and they can uh, season with the, what they have in, 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 the, in, the, in the restaurant, in the caupona, uh, celery, anchovies, olives. Uh, they cannot use tomatoes, the, one, the, the main ingredient today of the modern caponata. Yes, because caponata is the typical salad, the Neapolitan salad with the basis of um, a fresella, a biscuit under soaked in the water and then we add on caponata whatever we have in the fridge. So if we have a celery, tomato, uh, olive, any kind of olive, oil, salt. And this is the typical plate of, uh, of uh, summer when you, when, you don't want to, when you don't want to keep, to cook. But to prepare the, so from caupona, caponata. Caponata, even in the name, keeps the relationship with the old restaurant of Pompeii. So this is why I'm very proud to speak about the Neapolitan gastronomy, because we still do something that our ancestors did 2000 years ago. So the, the basis of caponata is the fresella. And in Naples, we have 
the last productor of Fresella, but a very special Fresella. It's not a Fresella, the round Fresella, but they produce a very special Fresella that is Fresella Amarzara. So I ask, I ask Paula to start the video to explain what is Fresella and who's the last productor of Fresella in, in Naples. And uh, I want to, you to discover this, this, this person that uh, <laughs> since 1832, he produced Fresella. Okay. This is a place where nobody can really arrive. Uh, this is the Antonio Good morning. Buongiorno. How are you? Tutto bene. Buongiorno. This is Antonio Di Paolo. This is the fifth generation of producers of a very special biscuit that is Frasella Amaruzzara. This is the grandfather, Nonno Luigi. Nonno Luigi no. that still works here every day, since every day of the year. And you are inside the museum, the museum of Frasella, with all the instruments of the work of the old Fresellaro. So it's five generations of more than 200 years that these people produce in the same place from at least four generations. Only this biscuit with the same recipe. Uh, the, the name of the biscuit is Fresella Maruzzara and it's made with five different flowers, five. So this is Semolina, Antonio, yes. Semolina. and this all is wheat. all wheat. Kruska, Kruska, Bran, 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 oh, uh, okay, uh, uh, single zero, a double zero, double O, and okay, I can say you that it is a sixth uh, ingredient, I will never reveal you, this is a secret, okay, we can, we can say Can The old uh, biscuits that are not sold, they keep in, in, a, in, a, in a basket and they crunch, and they reuse in production. Yeah, okay, this is the sixth ingredient. So this means that uh, in this biscuit, there is the biologic memory of a biscuit of 200 years ago. So when you eat the, the biscuit of this year, you are eating uh, something that says at least 200 years. There is a biologic memory, a small, small memory of the, the biscuit of the grand, grand, grandfather. And moreover, Yes. This is the, the most important ingredient and of course it, this is also another link between generations because Antonio, this is the, like a song for Antonio because this is the, the mother yeast, the, the yeast that uh, the family of Antonio, the, fa the Familia Di Paolo keeps from, from 200 years and every day it's renovated. Uh, this, this East goes with Antonio on holiday to the beach uh, under the umbrella because he cannot stay alone. He wants to be always with somebody. This is the older, the older of us. It has more than 200 years. And he keep this. Imagine that during the Second World War, the grand-grandfather of Antonio, he ran away from Naples, but he forgot to take with him the, the, the mother east, but well, he returned back to Naples by foot, working, risk under the bomb, only for taking the, uh, the, the mother east. 180 years ago, uh, the grand-grand-grandfather of Antonio was asking to invent, <coughs> to realize a biscuit uh, during a big uh, festa of shells, uh, yeah, the snails were very, very typical in uh, Porta Capuana, very close to here. So he realized a biscuit that uh, it was hard to be not totally melted in, in the hot water, but soft enough to be cut it with the fork and eat it. So this is the perfect balance and it, 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 they need so many tests. The Frasella of Antonio is considered today the best quality Frasella of the town, of town. So all the restaurants has to come here. And this is why we want to preserve this extra ties, we want to preserve this know-how. Okay, we want, we, we want to help 
to preserve because the, the main responsible of preserving the, the, the know-how of the old generation of people who work here is Antonio Di Paolo. Benvenuti ad Antica Presenteria di Paolo. Ecco qua Paolo. Stefano Cedri che è venuto fuori. Sì, Buongiorno a tutti. Arrivederci a tutti e speriamo di rivedervi presto. So now, now I hope you understand why I pray every night uh, for, uh, for an activity, for a factory. And uh, uh, this, is, this is why I share the mission of Carinari Backstreet, because we want to protect these people, because it's very easy. They don't work uh, from one year. They don't, the, they don't produce anymore after the COVID time. So they, uh, we are trying to help them. And this is the Fresella of Antonio. It's a very simple product, but it's really in this product there, there are thousands of years of history. Like I explained, I explained you seven ingredients to, to do some, something like this. The Fresella were sold all, all around the city. Uh, you can find Fresella in all the restaurants of Naples. Um, this is the best Fresella of Napoli, the Fresella of Antonio. But, uh, and uh, these people selling Fresella was the Tarallari. Yes, uh, the, these people going around the city, not only selling Fresella, but they also sell, they also sell the Taralli. That is the third element we have. Taralli is the typical, the, the typical snack, the rustic Neapolitan tarallo. I, I asked to, to Paola to start the, another video on tarallo. Tarallo is the, the oldest snack of the city. We eat tarallo every time, every day, every morning. Uh, uh, because tarallo, okay, start, okay. Tarallo is the, the perfect combination. Okay, the perfect combination of the black pepper, so very, 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 very strong. And then there is the sweetness of almond, oh, okay. And then everything is combined by lard. So three main ingredients, pepper, almond and lard, and the combination really creates an addiction. I didn't open the, this box today because if I, if I try to, to eat one of that, I never find peace until I finish all the box. It's really one of the best products of Naples. We use Tarali to celebrate a new house. Uh, in uh, Tarali in every party, see, we, we take Tarali on the boat, but mostly we go to, to eat Tarali every day close to the sea, on the beach, on the rocks of the Napoli seaside, together with the beer. This is the typical snack of Naples and we, for us is like a, one of the, one of the, the friend of all the day. Imagine that once uh, Tarali when were eaten, soaking in the, in the, in the sea, but today is okay. This is not a, Mm, this is not it's it's not not good to do given to the pollution of the water probably taralli were, were were born for a chance because uh, you know taralli probably uh, the the goal was to produce uh, the pro to produce the bread but uh, after producing the bread all the 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 scraps of dough uh, they were reused mostly by the, the children in the oven to, to try to do something very small for them. This is why probably for a chance we produce the Tarali and today you can find Tarali all, all around the city and I wait for you also to, to taste Tarali. I hope that they will arrive to you, but be careful because they, they are, can create addiction to you. But the, the most representative of the the, um, the, the Neapolitan gastronomy, you know, is probably the, the fourth element we, I want to present to you tonight, and that is the pasta, pasta, maccheroni. Yes, because, you, you know, until the 15th century, uh, people of south of Italy, Neapolitan people, were called leaf eater, mangia foglie, mangia foglie, yes, because the, our region was so generous, so fertile, so prod productive. We have so many vegetables, we eat a lot of vegetables. But uh, in the 16th century, we discovered the, the goodness of the pasta of macaroni. We became from mangiafoglie, 
leaf eater, we became manja macaroni, macaroni eater. And uh, after 500 years, we are still today macaroni eater. In Naples, we eat uh, pasta at least once a day. When I was younger, uh, twice a day. My, my, my wife, my mother prepared pasta twice a day. This is why in, in Naples we are <laughs> mostly, we are quite fat, okay, because we eat too much pasta probably. Uh, pasta entered the, uh, became one of, of the elements of a Mediterranean diet. And um, we choose the one kind of pasta to be inserted in, in the in the in the panel of product I have sent to you. I have, I have chosen a very artisanal pasta, a very niche product. A, a small company and can start the video who produce a very small quantity of pasta in in the city of pasta, Gragnano. That is a town close to Napoli. That is famous to be the city of the pasta. We became uh, macaroni eaters, I told you, 500 years ago, and still today we are called macaroni all around the world. French people call us Italiani macaroni. Macaroni, spaghetti, is the symbol all over the world of Italianity. Uh, for example, I always say that in the cinema, spaghetti Western, it means the Western Italian style. So all the all the product of the, the best pasta in, in around Naples are concentrated in this small town close to Napoli, 800 inhabitants. The name is Gragnano. In Gragnano, 500 years ago, ago were created the, the ideal condi condition, climatic uh, for the best meals, for the best water, to become the city of the pasta. Uh, and we choose the pasta because of faella, because oh, in, in the center, in the center, in the central square of uh, Gragnano, there is this small factory, faella. It, it was founded in uh, 1907 by Gaetano Faella. So not so much, one, 120 years. And now we are already to the fourth generation because after Gaetano, the son was Mario and then was Sergio. And now there are the two sons of Sergio. This is the production of spaghetti and of linguine. The, the principle, uh, it, it was no compromise. Only the best Italian dur durmo weight, only the spring water of, from Gragnano, a very slow dough. This is another, uh, the, 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 the calm, the slow to produce. And the bronze drawing, uh, before you saw the extrusor, that have, has to be in bronze, because only the bronze is the metal that is able to create a rough surface. If we, if we open the box and you touch the pasta, you can see that the surface of pasta is not, uh, is not so flat, but is very, very rough. And this is very important. This is very important because they, in this way, this kind of pasta can uh, can guess the best season, the best season, and uh, can be seasoned with sauce, with the ragu, with the tomatoes. This is very important that the pasta is very rough. Uh, in uh, this pastificio faella. Um, I, I hope that one day you will go with me to visit. They produce two main horses, two work horses. One of these is the one you are looking at. This is the candles. They produce mostly candles and pacchero. Uh, the one I sent you is the pacchero. The one I, we are looking is the candles. The candles is uh, probably one of the best quality of uh, maccheroni. Yeah, this is the finish. The candles is the the macaroni of the Sunday. It is the the the, the dream of every Napolitan. Uh, every Sunday we use the best quality of pasta, and the best quality is this long candle that usually the the boys of the family try to cut, and then we season this uh, cutted pasta with uh, a, a very long uh, cooked so sauce that is the Neapolitan ragu. Ragu is a, 
is a, a, a happy marriage between a group of meat and the, the, the best San Marzano tomatoes. And they stay together for four, five, six, seven hours. Imagine the best ragu can stay on the fire even seven hours and the, the, the meat gives to the tomatoes all the energy and it remains uh, practically diet after, after all this long cooking. And the second workhorse of the pasta faella is the pacchero. Pacchero in, in Neapolitan language means uh, slap, slap, but the pacchero is a big slap, the, the, the slap given to the, uh, all the hand, all the hand. It, pacchero, it comes from Greek because in, uh, we have another cultural value that is the Neapolitan language also or, uh, beside the Neapolitan gastronomy. And in Neapolitan language, we speak, for example, Greek. Pacaro comes from the Greek pankeiros. It means uh, with the all hands, pankeiros. And from pankeiros, the name pacchero. There is a legend that this kind of pasta is named pacchero because when it's cooked and is uh, so soft, and when you put in the plate, uh, so it flattens and uh, gives a sound like a, a small slap. There is another legend that uh, say that uh, in this, uh, small factory 100 years ago when the Pacaro was born, um, the, 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 the boys working in the factory try to, to, to stolen a little bit of pasta and try to eat pasta. So the boss, they give, they give them a big slap. But uh, after that uh, happens that when they produce this uh, kind of pasta with a big hole, even to arrive to four centimeters, they realized that uh, this pasta was really a new, was perfect, for example, to be seasoned with uh, vegetable, uh, with uh, sauces, with meat, uh, or we use mostly with seafood. So I hope that you will enjoy this, um, this pasta with seafood because you, can, you will appreciate the, the, rough, the, the rough surface. Uh, the, the, the poorest, the theorics of pasta, they don't use at all the stripe, the stripe pasta, yeah, the stripes, because, uh, because they say that uh, uh, Neapolitan pasta, the pasta of Gragnano has not to be striped because the, because the adherence of the, the, of the sauce is guaranteed by the rough surface. So after pasta, what is the best marriage of pasta? The best way to, to eat pasta, the best marriage was with tomatoes. So we are celebrating a, an, an American product. You know that tomatoes come from America. Uh, our the Romans didn't know tomatoes. We didn't know it during the Middle Age. And after the discovering of America, when the tomatoes arrived, arrived in Europe, um, for 200 years, uh, all the Europeans believed that the, it was not possible to eat. It was uh, like a poison. So nobody touched tomatoes. Only after 200 years, so it, be, it means only in 19th century, only 200 years ago, we started using tomatoes. And we produce tomatoes in the best quality, San Marzano tomatoes. San Marzano is a small town very close to Napoli. And we, we were so, so clever that we import tomatoes from America and we used to cultivate in San Marzano and the 90% of production of San Marzano tomatoes was exported again to America. Still today in America, San Marzano quality is considered to be the best quality of tomatoes. And the legends say that also Thomas Haynes invented the ketchup using San Marzano tomatoes. So uh, tomatoes come uh, across the Atlantic to Italy and then they recross again to come to America and then with ketchup and they return back again to Italy. So if we use, we start the, vi the video, no, not yet, because we choose for you not to sell you, to send you the San Marzano tomatoes, but we prefer to sell a very special quality of tomatoes in niche product because uh, Close to Vesuvius, with the, in the in the in the dry land of volcanic land of Vesuvius, uh, since uh, two hundred years, we produce a very special uh, tomato that is tomato of Vesuvius. The the name is Piennolo. It, Piennolo comes from the, the word pendulum because it's uh, preserved just hanging, no fridge. It's able to stay 
until six months without being in the fridge, without any kind of preservation. So we can start with the video of uh, Pomodoro del Piennolo from the Pendulum. Protecting uh, people, protecting activities, protecting factories, protecting good food, good ingredients. And this is a place where Agostino uh, still uh, offers to all the Neapolitan population the best quality food. For example, this is the, a place where you can uh, find all over the year the tomatoes of Vesuvius, the hanging tomatoes. This is a, a very small tomato, very typical of the, the dry land, typical of the volcanic land of Vesuvius, that has, the, that has the, a, a skin very, very hard, and this allows to the tomato to be kept for five, six months without fridge, just hanging. And this is why Agostino realized uh, many hanging tomatoes, and you can find those all over the year in this place. And another mission of uh, culinary back streets is to protect this kind of production in places like this. Come inside. OK. So no fridge. We keep the tomatoes like this, hanging with tomatoes. And uh, this is Agostino, another uh, heritage of our city. He prepares this uh, kind of uh, hanging tomato. When you need just a couple of them, you take a couple and you put on a bread, the salt, a little bit of salt, oil, and that's enough. This is the typical uh, midday breakfast of Neapolitan people. Agostino is the, another cultural heritage and is another person, another, another place that the culinary back streets wants uh, to preserve in this city. So the tomato of Vesuvio has a tail. This is the secret to, to recognize the real uh, Vesuvian tomatoes, the Pomodoro of Piennolo. So after the, the first revolution in, in 16th century, the revolution of Maccheroni, the second great revolution was the revolution of tomatoes. Tomatoes changed completely our life. Our life was white before the revolution of tomatoes. Thanks to Americans, we can say that our life became red. Now we cannot imagine how our life without tomatoes. So two great revolution. Oh, also because tomatoes allows to not only to to create the best quality of pasta with tomatoes, the most uh, famous plate in the world using the pasta, the, the great Marriott. But moreover, the tomatoes allows to the, the pizza to become pizza napoletana. You know that UNESCO protects Neapolitan pizza. Two years ago, the pizza napoletana was uh, uh, declared like a cultural heritage of humanity protected by UNESCO. I know that many Americans thinks that pizza is born in America, in Chicago or something like this. Pizza is born in Naples, it has been exported in, in America and today is the most popular food in the world, thanks to the, to, to the American tomatoes, that's, that's true. Uh, after pizza, after uh, tomatoes, after that, uh, now we need a coffee. Naples is considered to be, the city, in Italy, the city of the coffee. Imagine that we have a very a special machine that all over Italy, in Europe, is said the Napoletana, the machine Napoletana is not espresso. It means that the boy after the boiling water, we just turn up the, okay, in the, in the other way, we boil the water and then we turn up and with drops. So uh, just for um, pouring the, the, the coffee. So it's a very, very light coffee. But uh, Naples arrive, arrived very late to the coffee, very late, because in, in Paris, it, they were already um, very popular, the, the Café de Paris in Vienna, in Vienna. We have the, the coffee house, and it was the queen of Naples, end of, end of the 18th century, only 200 years ago. She wants to taste the 
Austria, Austriac coffee, and the, the coffee arrived in Naples 200 years ago. But we really uh, recovered the, the delay because Naples was the bigger port of Mediterranean. So this means that in Naples, we had many quality of coffee, many qualities. And we developed in Naples a great uh, experience, great competence to realize the best blend. One of these great uh, roaster of coffee was Samuele Passalacqua. Samuele Passalacqua, 100 years ago, he founded this company, the Passalacqua Company, and uh, um, not only producing, uh, this is one of the, the blend of coffee, coffee Alhambra. If we can start with the video, because Samuele Passalacqua um, uh, produced coffee, but he opened it in Naples, uh, also um, different cafe, One, the name is Mexico, but it, it is not Mexican, it's a Neapolitan brand. As you can see in the video, these three, these, we have still today, three bar with steel the, in the style of the 60s. And this is exactly in historical center. In Naples, uh, coffee is a cult, is a religion. We don't use uh, normally tables, we, we take coffee stand up, a, a glass of water before, but we have three main problems. When, when I will invite you to have coffee in Naples, I have to advise you that we have three problems for foreign people to take coffee in Naples. First of all, the coffee in Naples is, service, is served already sweetened. So if you want a bitter coffee without sugar, we have to say before. Otherwise, the standard coffee is already with sugar. First, first problem. Second problem is that the cup, the cup is really boiling, is hot. If you touch your mouth, you really have a serious risk to damage your mouth. So uh, be, be careful, but I will teach you a, a technique that we use in Naples to avoid to destroy the mouth. And the third problem in Naples is the tip, the tip. Yeah, I know that in America, the tip is something uh, very complicated because uh, you know that you determine in a mathematical way uh, the tip to give to the restaurant, to the waiters, okay. In Naples, we don't have so much problem of tips. You can even avoid the tip in restaurants, but you cannot avoid one coin, one small coin of tip when you take coffee. The tip is mandatory, is obligatory. When you take when you take a coffee, so Napoli, città di caffè, Naples, city of coffee, all, all over Italy. We arrived late, but we recovered the delay. Okay, in the box you found also a sign. Okay, we are a little bit late. Uh, you find also a sign, a sign that I have that is behind me. The sign is Pomodori 099. Yeah, because we want to an answer to value, to protect not only food, not only factory, but did you see that there is a link between all the, the places I showed you today? They are places that they are always very old, more than 100 years at least in the same place with the same person, with the same tools. So this is what we want to show you. But um, Naples, it means also Arctic handicraft. And there is one person that is the symbol, really, of the, the Italian markets. So if we can start with the last video of tonight, the video of Pasquale, the number man, the man of the numbers. We are going to discover the last, the last number man. Yeah, okay, he's a man who realizes signs in wood that are handmade with all the prices of all the fruit, vegetables, and all this, the simple things you saw in this market. This is the last one after Pasquale, the number man, only laser printer. Okay, so let's go to discover. Tutti i vendoli, salumieri, pizzerie, tutto, tutto, l'abbigliamento, tutto, tutto quello che c'è da scrivere. 
lavoro che mi piace, non, è, non c'è definizione, a me piace come passione, come lavoro, come proprio una cosa mia, proprio ci sto dentro. Pasquale è l'unico uomo che fa questo tipo di sign of price per tutti i napoletani market. Questo è l'ultimo uomo di 8 brothers. All the eight brothers with father and mother, they live in this place. Now this is only the workplace of Pasquale, but he lived here before. This is very simple, it's a naive, very naive, simple art, but it's really witness of a, a history of, a, of, of this wonderful city. And this is why we culinary backstage, we want to preserve all, not only food, Not a, but also people like, uh, like Pasquale. The Forazzi are the, the great uh, witness of, of this city. So, Pasquale is a witness of a very important part of Napoli. So, I hope when you will come to Napoli, don't buy magnet, but the, I, I want to, you to, to give a, a sign, a sign that is the, the best souvenir of a visit in places very special like this. There is a, the uh, eight element in, in the box, but uh, we, we don't have video since we, we cannot go over there to, to take video because uh, of the COVID time, uh, it's uh, impossible to, to, to travel in the region. So, and the, the last one is uh, the Biscotti of Castellammare. This is a very special blue, blue, blue packet. The, the name is Maresca. Maresca is a very old producer of this special Biscotto di Castellammare. Castellammare is a very small town close to Napoli. 10,000 people living there, and this is the city of sailors. This is, and the sailors, when they go around the world with ships, they always carry with them uh, this special biscuit uh, to be soaked in the, sometime in the sea, in, in, the, in the sea water. And there is a legend that uh, Donna Concetta in uh, 1941 invented the recipe of this, uh, of this biscuit, but she does not want the recipe to anybody and she was poisoned for this. Uh, but she, she had give, given the, the recipe to the son. So the son after the death of the mother, and this gave great uh, um, publicity, raised a great interest uh, around this product. Uh, today, Biscotto di Castellammare is considered, is considered to be the most popular biscuit in our region. It's sold really everywhere. And I, want to, and uh, they use the, the, the blue paper, that is the paper in which uh, Neapolitan used to, to sell the pasta. Yeah, before the pasta was, now the pasta is, is sold in, in packets, but before it was sold uh, on, on weight and it was closed in this very special kind of, of paper. So I am Amadeo Colella, you can call me Amadeus, and uh, I, am, uh, I have been, uh, I, I didn't present myself in the beginning, I have been a university researcher in the University of Naples for 25 years in engineering of telecommunications, but now I, I left my work and uh, now I, I want to uh, to preserve, I pray every, every night uh, to preserve places uh, Uh, like the one I showed you to preserve people like Sari or, uh, <laughs> or like Paola or like Gigal or uh, my friends. I pray every night because my daughters can one day can appreciate all the, the beauty and the good of this uh, wonderful town that is Naples. Grazie Amadeo. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And so special to get to see Pascale there. Um, someone actually in the chat just asked how, how they can support all the different um, vendors that you showed. And you know, one of the ways is to go to the Culinary Backstreets website um, and get a Naples box. And as many of you have noticed, it is out of stock right now because so many of you ordered it for this. But um, I just heard from Yigal, who's on with us tonight, who's one of the founders of Culinary Backstreets that it'll be back really soon. And uh, you should just contact them directly um, and they can help you. So Yigal, maybe you can put in the chat the best 
email or best way to contact you directly um, for those of you who are looking to get the Naples box as soon as it's back in stock. And that is a great way because, you know, as as someone mentioned, you know, I'm sure that Pascale doesn't have his own website, for example, but culinary no, backstreets. No, 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 yeah, no. but but people like Amadeo and Culinary Backstreets are are working to support all of these vendors um, who really have been very affected by the lack of tourism due to the pandemic. So I, I did a present to to the to the Antonio, the Frasella maker, the, the one who makes the biscuits, and I decided to 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 make for him the, the website. Oh, it was terrible because it's a very a very hard to do, to do something for a kind of activity of this side they don't have the the posts the, the, the you cannot pay by card everything is it's like 200 years ago <laughs> right exactly um yeah so you can go on their website and you all just put the the email right there um someone had a question why is cafe mexico called cafe mexico being that it's in naples yeah, because, because I take the Mexico, uh, because uh, Neapolitan uh, uh, likes the the exotic words. He uh, uses the, an Indian, an Indian, you, because uh, Samuele Passalacqua founded the company during the 50s. And at that time was the time of the, the Western film. Yeah, the Indians uh, in, in our culture, also my generation, the, the history of Indians. So, uh, there is no connection with coffee because uh, in the Central America, Indians, they did you because the, the best quality of coffee is Arab, Arabica, no, you know, the Arabica is the best quality. So the legends say that uh, it was an Arabian um, uh, sh shepherd that uh, he, he saw that the, the ships, when, when they eat uh, some special, um, vegetables they didn't sleep all night so he tried to do uh, it, it, this was the coffee so it was burned coffee but uh, Samuele Passalacqua used exotic name Alhambra is like a oriental name the the, the symbol is the, the Indian with the tongue outside but is the, the same symbol from 70 year the name is Passalacqua Passing the water. Okay, this is the surname of the founder. But it's he used this name, Mexico. There is no connection with Mexico anyway. Could probably use a, a symbol update, but we'll we'll let it slide for right now. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, someone asked, do, do most people eat dried pasta in Naples as opposed to fresh? Excuse me, can you repeat? Oh, sorry. Uh, do most people in Naples eat dry pasta? Yeah, we eat dry pasta. We eat dried pasta every day. Oh, you mean if we prepare dry pasta at home? Because we distinguish between the fresh pasta we prepare at home every day, we can, but the, the dried pasta is the one we eat every day in Naples. We eat pasta even twice a day. The three main elements of Mediterranean diet uh, since the, the, the Greeks 3000 years ago are wine, olive oil, and wet, frumento. Uh, so this is why, um, uh, you know, the, the, we have an American um, uh, science, scientist, Ansel Keys, he studied the Mediterranean diet. And uh, he say that uh, probably for a chance, uh, this is a diet of a, of a long life. Anyway, we eat dried pasta every day. Great, I, that does answer the question. Um, Amadeo, the, the frazella, you mentioned it should be soaked. Yeah. Uh, how long, how much water and no. for how long? And then, yeah. and then what is the best way, what should people eat with it? Okay, usually uh, in a plate, uh, if, you, if you come to Naples, I will meet you. We use three frasellas in, in a plate in this way. And we use it we, without soaking in the water before. We put in a plate and then usually we use with broth. We use, for example, with the vongole, vongole shells, clam. with the seafood, with clam. This is the, the, the typical the typical way of using these, these ones is to put hot water directly 
uh, on on the top of the three the three ones. In in alternative, you can you can eat it uh, soaking under the water just two seconds, three seconds, one uh, one side and the other side, and then you take two tomatoes, just two tomatoes of, of the pendulum. You put you. You squeeze on it and you put salt and oil, and this is the typical uh, snack during the day. Great. That sounds delicious. Um, what about, oh, someone asked, what, what did people eat with pasta before tomatoes were there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, our life was white. You know that today when, uh, when you are ill, the doctor, um, uh, say to to eat in white to uh, white it means to eat uh, plain. more properly yeah plain, plain. Uh, before tomatoes it means uh, for three thousand years because we know tomatoes only from two hundred years we used to to uh, dress pasta uh, only with the cheese that in 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 Italy was pecorino cheese was um, and and uh, with lard. This is the, the most typical way to, to, to see us on the pasta. Um, uh, lard and, uh, and cheese. So and, uh, yeah, and we had also a very special plate. We have two plates that arrive still until today. One is was carbonara, carbonara with, uh, with ham and egg. And a second way was Genovese. Genovese, uh, it's uh, the same sound of the city of Genova, but is is not Genovese. Is not in, don't don't come from Genova. It's a very Neapolitan plate, and uh, it's made with meat and um, onions. A quantity, an infinite quantity of onions. Uh, so this is the white ragu. So when a, um, when arrived the tomatoes, everything changed. Our life became red. Great, thank you. Why has why has hand painting signs gone out of style? Is it because the modern printing is you know more affordable and quicker? Uh, uh, this man uh, he has only two two fonts. I say there is one is italic and one is bold. Uh, And I, I want to try to create Olim Pasquale font. Uh, they were eight brothers. All the family they lived. All the eight brothers was hand hand painting. Uh, they were called the family of the number man. Um, uh, he paints always in, in the same way since uh, he was born. He, he does not know exactly. Uh, you know, he knows only the heart of the the, the good the good of writing, and the, the, that's all. It's, it's like a very simple, very simple person, very simple sign, very very simple way of uh, of writing. Thank you. Um, someone is asking when it's safe again to travel. When is a good time to come to Naples for the Nocino harvest? Okay, uh, I uh, in, in, usually uh, the best time to visit Naples is in spring, uh, uh, summer, and uh, autumn. But uh, in Naples, uh, the, you know, uh, you, you mean for the COVID time? After that, um, yeah. sorry, sorry, Amadeo. The question is, where where is the best place to visit to see to see or participate in Nocino harvest or production? No. Ah, Norcino no harvest. <laughs> no, Norcino. Mm -hmm. What is no, Norcino? You mean the liquor of chestnut? Yes. The chest okay. Yeah, yeah. We call them Nocillo in, in, in Italy. Nocino. But Nocino is an international name. Uh, okay. Uh, if you, uh, all the, there is a very old tradition that all the, the chestnut has to be harvest in the night of San Giovanni. So the night of San Giovanni is 24 June. So if you come 24 June, I can meet you to visit. Uh, uh, and all the chestnut has to be 
harvest in, in the same night because th this is the magic night, the night of San Giovanni. Okay, it's not important, but, but uh, you know, um, there are some um, uh, many not important things that became uh, very important to, pro to produce a very special niche product like uh, Nocino of San Giovanni. Sorry, and, I meant, uh, I, I did mean walnuts. Is that the same? Walnuts? Walnut, yeah, 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 walnut, 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 not chestnut. My fault, yeah. Um, someone is asking for you to explain your your coffee drinking technique. Okay, uh, the in Italy the cup is boiling. Boiling it means that you cannot achieve it with the hand. Probably this is due to the fact that Naples has a bad reputation before, like epidemic, pestilence. So the, the cup uh, was a, a vehicle of contamination, could be in, in a bar. This is why, you know, many people take the, the, the coffee with the left hand, because you turn the, the cup and using the left hand, left hand, you use the side of the cup. Uh, less use it respect, respect to the, the, uh, if you if you drink with the right hand because 99% use the right hand so people turn the cup but the the technique to to don't destroy the mouth is to to use the the spoon the little spoon to take a, a little part of a coffee and uh, um, take the coffee on the border of the cup in this way coffee is boiling but anyway is less hot than than the cup so the temperature of the cup goes down and you can drink without any problem <laughs> right <laughs> uh, do neapolitans eat lemon pasta like in the amalfi no uh lemon pasta is only another niche product uh, typical from amalfi in naples we have a production of lemon pasta but it's not so popular it's mostly for tourists, okay? Because because it's, you know it's a combination of two great products of our region, lemons and pasta. But in in everyday use, we we uh, never 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 can eat. Imagine that uh, if I, I open my pantry at home, if I open now my pantry, you will find thirty packets of different sides of pasta, different uh, uh, quality quality of pasta because the the the, the dough is always the same, but uh, every every single size of pasta has uh, different uses. Uh, we don't have in Naples rice at all. You know that we use 95, 97% pasta and only 3% rice, ignoring that in the rest of the world, 95% is rice and uh, pasta is a very, very limited use. We just have one small packet of rice, just in case. And when we take the, the packet of rice, we have to check the date of expired because usually it expired in Naples. <laughs> okay, last question. Uh, yeah. So we'll let you go to bed. I don't know, do you know the difference, no. <laughs> the difference between espresso and pasta l'acqua? No. Uh, uh, Pasta l'acqua is only the name of the brand, ah. the brand, okay. Um, uh, so pasta l'acqua. The difference between this machine is not espresso. You know, the espresso is the mocha. The mocha, it means that the boiling water with the high pressure pass through the, the filter of the coffee and goes down, okay? So this that's espresso. The, the water is pushed down with the... the the strongness of the, the the boiling water. In this case, is totally different. You put the water inside, in, in inside this, and you close, and you put boiling water. Then there is a small hole, and you realize that the the water is boiling because you see vapor going out. This is the perfect moment. You you turn off the fire, so you turn off the fire, and you just make these so the water is on the top and the drops pass through the filter of the coffee but without the pushing of the boiling the espresso water it just drop drops passing like uh, so the coffee is much lighter and uh, it's totally different this is the neapolitan way the, the name of this machine is napoletana and uh, for the perfection they used to put a cone of, of a paper these 
to avoid that the flower goes out from this, this hole, okay? <laughs> so this is a special way of uh, producing uh, Neapolitan coffee. Great. Thank you, Amadeo. We will let you go to bed. Same with you, Paola. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying up late and for that wonderful tour. Uh, I feel very hungry now. Yes. <laughs> Here um, it's a, it's a one one fifteen in the morning, so it's okay. very late to eat. <laughs> it's a rest, and for everyone watching, I I did record, so I will send this video to everyone tomorrow if you missed some of it. Um, I hope that uh, all the people uh, will come to Naples to to do the tour of Calinari Back Street, of course, with me, and also with all the people who works with me. We have five guides five wonderful women that they work with me and they are really expert and we can go all together to have a tour with culinary backstreets. I can't wait. I really can't wait. Okay. Thank you everyone. And I'll send you information about culinary, culinary backstreets and all the wonderful tours they do. Good night, everyone. And see you soon. Stay safe. <laughs>